Hey everyone, happy July. It is a beautiful summer day here in Wisconsin. Finally, the weekend outlook looks marvelous for the 4th of July celebrations that are going on. After two weeks of rain, I think we all are very happy about this. So I hope the weather by you this weekend is amazing as is going to be here in Wisconsin. So I'll just chit chat a little bit while everybody jumps on. We have some fun stuff for you today. Uh, along with the tutorial, uh, I do have a couple things to talk about before we get into that. So one of the things I want to talk about is the gathering. So we are just announcing today, I think, about the reservations that we are taking for our retreat house here in Wisconsin. So starting August 23rd is the first week available for reservations, and we do have some um, ongoing events. So there are some weeks that you cannot grab, but we do have an email if you want to contact Jenny. She is our retreat manager, and she's gonna be taking those reservations for you. We do have a phone number, but our phones don't go live until July 8th. So just use the email for now, and eventually we will have a calendar on our Primitive Gatherings website page that will show you all the openings that we have for retreats. So you don't have to call Jenny and ask what is open. You can check that out ahead of time before you plan your booking. So we are super excited about that. The girls have been working super hard on getting all that information ready, getting everything tweaked just right. And it's turning out amazing. I just asked Kaylee when the last time she was over there, and she said it's been a while, but the flooring is going in, the cabinets are going in, all the finishing touches are kind of going in right now. So we're, we're really excited. And over the weekend, they're putting the floor in the kitchen. It's kind of a um, epoxy floor. So that needs a couple of days where nobody can be around for that. So I can't wait to show you what is going on there. But Big news today is that we are starting to take reservations. So I hope you want to come and see what we have for you. And we have something planned for the people who stay that first year. So you will get something that nobody else gets. So I don't want to ruin it, but there are a lot of perks that we're including with our stay. So make sure you read the flyer that will be sent to you or that will be on my blog later on. Um, just lots of things like if you we have two packages, like one is I think a three, three night, four day or six night, seven day package. And they include like gift cards for the store, all your meals, a swag bag. And like I said, they have dreamed up some very fun stuff for you. So come and see us, come see what we built. It's gonna be amazing. All right, so during the video today. I'm going to give away some things. You know, I love to give stuff away. So just to show you what I have to give away. So please comment, say where you're from, comment on what we're talking about, whatever. And we're going to pick some winners randomly like we always do. But we have a honey bun, two charm packs today, and then this Maker Valley t-shirt that I have on. It just came today. So I... I never checked the mail, so I checked the mail today, and there it was, and I'm thinking, perfect timing, right? So it was meant to be. So I do have a t-shirt to give away to somebody who uh, wins today on the blog, and this one is a large, so if that one doesn't fit, I'll just buy a gift card to Maker Valley for you for um, whatever size you take. No big deal. These, they're unisex. This I have a large on. I don't know if you know me, but it's hard to tell on video what size is what size. But um, no worries, you can pick whatever size you want. And then if you read my blog post, there may be a chance to win the t-shirt there as well. So when you go pick up your block pattern today or whenever, look for that chance to win the t-shirt as well. So I will wait a good week until next week. They're saying that the camera's out of focus, but the focus is in the camera. I'm not sure if it's an internet issue that we have, mm -hmm. but they're all like, Focus your camera. It is focused on my end. So I'm just looking into it. Just want to. Okay. So pause we're for just a second. Kaylee's working on that right here. So we'll just check that out. <clears throat> yeah. Um, your internet thing on top. Are, what are you on? Are you on, on Bonjean?
All right, you're on. <laughs> All right. Ask so, him if you're back. So we're back. I guess we had a not a good internet signal coming through, so it should be good now. Let us give us a thumbs up if everything is better now. But hopefully, I didn't show you anything too much. So <laughs> if I was blurry, yeah. But anyway, what I was talking about was the t-shirt that I am giving away. So here's the t-shirt, Maker Valley. Kaylee will throw up the link if you want to go check it out. But it is called Yankee Doodle Dandy Quilt USA Flag T-shirt. So that is, I just ordered that when they had them up for a pre-order. And I thought, what a great giveaway for one of you guys to win a T-shirt. And like I said, if this one doesn't fit, we'll figure something else out. So are we good, Kaylee? Do you get thumbs up? Yes. Thumbs up. Okay. So lots of prizes today. Keep commenting. I'll say, hey, pick a winner. And that's when we'll do that. All right. So while everybody's still jumping on, let's go through... Uh, I want to show you a peek at my social lights quilt. All my blocks are done. I have them lined up to stitch into rows now. So look for that coming up. I'm hoping next week when I show you, it will all be quilted. And that will be super fun. I really love this quilt. It was a lot of fun to make. And um, Fat Quarter Shop stitch alongs are, are the best. You can't, can't uh, go wrong with doing one of their stitch alongs. Okay, so I do want to give you an update on where we are in our fundraising for Hogs for Heroes. We are at 14,000. They're saying it's blurry again. Yeah? Yeah. So are we on the right? Did it not we're switch? On, no, we're on the right one. Okay. I'm not sure what's going on. Does it look blurry to you? Nope. Hang on, I'm going to pop it on. It's crystal clear on my end. That's why it's hard for me to... Okay, let's just see once. How do we uh, find it? I just want to look. Um, yeah, just hang on a second. Well, I'm going to just check this out. See what it looks like on my phone. Um, if I can find it. Right, here we go. Definitely blurry. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. Yeah, we're sorry. I mean, we film we film up here all the time, so I don't know why it's not looking good now. This <laughs> is Jay, inventor of the pillow cube, and this is a. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, it is a little blurry, Kaylee. Yeah. All right, here we go. And a little way. Here, I'll let you see what they're seeing. Yeah, mm -hmm. Oh, I feel that bad. Guys. Right. I mean, it is. Yeah, tell them the quilts in the background won't be. Yeah, sorry. Okay. All right, we're just going forward. Hopefully, when we move over to the tutorial, things will be fine then, and we'll just make sure that uh, everything is going good. But. Social lights is done. And uh, so I was talking about the Hogs for Heroes donations. We are at $14,669. That is super awesome. We are over halfway um, and we're only four weeks in. So I'm hoping that we just keep chumming right along. So if you didn't get around to sending us your donation, we do have several ways that you can donate. So Kaylee, how do you want to do that? You want to pop them on? Yep, I'll pop them on for you. All right. So first one is? The first one I know is PayPal. Where did it go? All right. So if you want to go to PayPal to hogs for heroes at primitivegatherings.us, that is our direct link for using PayPal. If you want to go to Hogs for Heroes to their site, they also have a PayPal, which um, you can donate directly to Hogs for Heroes. But if you do that, please put in that you're a part of the, the Quilt Along or American Gathering Stitch Along or whatever you want to put just so they can put allocate those funds to Primitive Gatherings so we can raise those for our uh, hero to get to get a hog. And then we also have, if you want to send a check directly to Nicolay Bank, 
at 550 South Green Bay Road in Nina, Wisconsin, 54956. Five, yeah. yeah. Um, that is my bank account. Four, we have a special one just for Hogs for Heroes. Put the check primitive gathering slash Hogs for Heroes, and that will go in there as well. And if you have someone special that you want to honor, you want to send me a cute little, a nice little write up about your veteran. I would love to read a few of those on screen. I am also going to put a list of all the donations that we get from week to week on the blog post. So look for them near the bottom of the blog post see, to see if you can find your donation there as well. And then you can see all of those donations. And I know I did get one little comment that um, somebody didn't really like the fact that I would say, you know, Peggy from New York donated $100. She was, I don't know if offended was the right word, but she didn't like that I did that. But, you know, this is totally anonymous. Nobody knows who Peggy from New York is with her $100 donations. And um, nobody has to feel bad if they can only give $5. Because you remember, we all come from different walks of life. We all have different income levels. And $500 to somebody may not be no big deal to their monthly income or whatever. So they have a reason to donate $500. And if, if you can only donate $5, we still appreciate that. We still, that still matters. All those five or 10 or $25 donations add up and we will get to our goal. If everybody can do that, anybody who's doing this pattern, please send me five bucks. That's great. That's all I need. And we will get there. I promise you, we will get there. And we have some fun things planned coming up to raise some more money once we get, and we're going to do some tier things like, Okay, we're going to give you this once we get to 15,000 or something like that. So we have some things planned for you. The problem is, is we are moving right now. So, you know, I don't know if you remember, but this stitch along was supposed to be ended by now. But we just roll with the punches because look, look how fun it is to be sewing flags during the summer, during this whole thing. And we are still excited about it, but <clears throat> we didn't plan on moving and doing the stitch along and doing our summer block of the weeks and all the other things that go on at Primitive Gallings all at the same time. So it is what it is. And we just roll along with it. And here we are. Okay, so please send us your donation. Um, we love it. Someone wants to know, do you get to pick who the hog goes to? Do you want to kind of describe uh, Yeah, that so what looks? happens is people nominate the hero that gets the hog. So the then... Um, the committee for Hogs for Heroes, the, um, they go through all the applicants and then they pick the most deserving um, hero at the time. So there is a process that they go through. And no, I do not get to pick. Somebody else picks who's going to get the bike that we raise. So completely unanimous. If you have a Wisconsin hero that you want to nominate, get get that in because they are looking for people they are getting way more um way more uh, donations so they can keep buying more bikes for these veterans so it's really rolling along and they expect it to only do one a year and sometimes they're at five and six a year so it's very popular it's very uh very rewarding for them and like i said we our bike will not be donated until 22. So kind of keep that in mind and um, we will keep you abreast of when that happens. But they want to know if they're going to see the presentation of it. You bet. <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to be right at Primitive Gatherings in our new place. You will see it. It'll be videotaped live. We will definitely include all of you can watch it. Like I said, it's going to be amazing and uh, we can't wait till that happens. So that is the. That is the icing on the cake when can, they get when they get that bike. Can they attend the bike donation? Sure. You bet. You bet. It'll be open to anybody who wants to come. And we'll have more information at that time. Yes. So they are no they know. Yes, we we and I think there's a couple more um gift bike giftings coming on this year. And I will do my best to get to them and show you what it's like. There I did post a few things like on my Facebook or on um some of the blog posts previous to this, you will see some of the recipients or go to Hogs for Heroes, go to their website. They have a list of all 19 heroes that have already gotten bikes and you get to read their stories and you get to understand 
you know, what they've gone through and why do they deserve a bike and so much more. But they're very happy with the bike. <laughs> okay, so hopefully I just want to read a couple of the really heartfelt letters that I got for this week. And this one is from Peggy Elliott. And she says, let me say that I'm thrilled to be part of this awesome project, American Gathering Stitch Along. I feel so excited to be a part of a wonderful community of quilters and stitchers who are kind hearted and generous in their interactions with others and true sense of community. I have seen on your Facebook pages. So she loves that on our Facebook groups that she can see us interacting wonderfully, beautifully, and it is a great environment for us to hang out at. I am sending along my donation for Hogs for Heroes for a variety of reasons. First, I would like to honor my father for his service in the Army Corps, Air Corps, for his dedication to our country and for the part he played in the pre preservation of freedoms we all enjoy today. My father served in World War II, part of the greatest generation in every sense of the word. He instilled in me a sense of pride, service, and service to others and country throughout my entire life. As a result of his patriotism and dedication, I too became a member of the armed services in the Army, in the U.S. Army. My father was kind and giving person who would have been very proud of such an organization as Hogs for Heroes and the difference they are able to make in the lives of so many veterans. Next, I would like to honor my son, Eric, who proudly served at As Afghanistan and returned home safely, but not without suffering the trauma of war in the form of PTSD. Our heroes suffer physically and mentally, and getting the help they need and so richly deserve is so very important. It gives me great joy to give and to help another veteran and hopefully make their lives better and help them heal. Our veterans deserve the very best for what they do for us. So glad to help. Blessings to you, Lisa, and your entire staff who make it possible for us to enjoy your therapy and help others at the same time. So Peggy gave $500. Isn't that awesome? So again, thank you so much. And this one is from Mary, and she is from New York. Dear Lisa and Primitive Gatherings team, thank you so much for doing this wonderful fundraiser. This donation on behalf of my father-in-law, Raymond, World War II veteran, served in the Navy and drove the landing craft in the South Pacific. He loved America and taught his sons and grandchildren what a special country they have. Also, my nephew Drew served in the Marines, and nephew Edwin, he serves in the Army. Hope this donation helps just a small token of my appreciation to all the men and women in the military. Thanks again, Mary. And that again was another big donation of $500. So this one is from Fran and I believe it was for $50. I purchased yardage at the local quilt shop and wish to make a donations for Hogs for Heroes to honor all Vietnam veterans. When I first read your blog post, I thought this was a strange thing to do. I didn't really understand until I read about Shannon Flynn. I'm proud to support you in this effort. My donation is enclosed. Thank you for all you do for your quilty followers and your efforts regarding this worthwhile program. Warm regards, Fran Bianchi. And then I have another one here for $50. And this one was sent to the bank. Howdy from, I can't read that. Howdy from Texas, sorry. <laughs> Dear folks at Nicolay Bank, please deposit this donation to the Primitive Gatherings Hogs for Heroes account. Best wishes, Kat, for $50. Thank you so, so much. And like I said, if you go on my blog today, you're going to see lists and lists and lists of those gorgeous donations. Um, let me see here. Where did they go? I just wanted to maybe point out a few more. Thomas from New York, $50. Nicole from Roswell, California, $50. Valerie, Katie, Texas, in memory of my husband's uncle, Joseph Bauer, who lost his life in World War II, $100. Shirley from Columbia, Maryland, $25. Marilyn from Houston, Texas, $5. Cindy from Troy, New York. Lisa, I love your blocks. You are giving us to make this quilt. An honor to give to this worthy cause. $25. Thank you, Cindy. $10 from Lee from Lee Summit, Missouri. Thank you for your service. What a great way to support our veterans. From Loveland, Colorado. Uh, Gilmore? <laughs> Gamero. 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 Sorry. Okay. We're going to take a time out. We're going to switch the battery. So hang on a minute and we'll be right back.
This is the new one? Yeah. All right, we're Yay. back. Okay. Okay, Linda from Alaska. Thanks for supporting our veterans. Nina from Gainesville, Florida, $25. Denise, Franklin, Massachusetts, $25. For those who fought courageously for our freedom, let us never forget. Thanks for a wonderful project and the wonderful cause. Let's do this. $20 from Kristen from Bree, California. Linda from Wisconsin Dells, $20. Sandra from Ohio. In honor of my father, Philip Glotch, thank you for this wonderful pattern. In honor for my four nephews who have served in the Navy, Joe, John, Jim, and Kelly. This was from Barbara from Mount Holly Springs, Pennsylvania for $25. Judith from Cajon, California, $25. Michelle from Dallas, Texas, $100. Thank you, Michelle. $50 from Shelly, San Jose, California. Thank you. Robin from West Jordan, Utah. Thank you for your service. Debbie from Rhinelander, Wisconsin, $20. In love room... Oh, in loving memory of Jeter, Wendy from San Jose, California. So if you don't know, Jeter passed away last Sunday. And yes, we are devastated. And he meant a lot to us. So thank you for that, Wendy. That is really, uh, really special. In honor of my father who served in Korea and Vietnam with all the gratitude for others who have served. From Kathy for $25. Lois from Weston, Wisconsin. Great cause and I'm happy to play with Play a small part in it, $25. Tamara from Caldwell, Ohio, $10. Nicole, $20. Thank you for all you do. In honor of Eugene Mizak, Julie from Comstock Park, Michigan, $20. Perry from Illinois, $20. Teresa from Point St. Lucie, Florida, $10. The Keith Bank Cleef Family Trust, $20. Sheila from Fair Oaks, California, $25. And again, on and on. Deborah from Redlands, California, 200. Thank you, Deborah. Amazing, amazing. Barbara from Waterloo, Iowa, 40. Cynthia from Temple, Texas, $500. So it's amazing. These, these people are just opening their hearts and we appreciate that. This is in memory of my dad, Joseph Wolf, and his brother, Kenneth B. Wolf. They were both in World War II, and I know they would have supported this cause. $50 from Deborah from Missouri. Hogs for Heroes is certainly blessed and have an advocate like you supporting their cause. Glad to be a part of it. Kay from Keele, Wisconsin. Nancy from Independence, Iowa, $40. Mary from White Plains, New York. I already read her, her card. Kathleen from Houston, Texas. I think I read hers. Sherry Lamar, $20, Kelly, $20, Becky, $20, Linda, $20, Barbara, $20, Shirley, $20. So that's about a whole bunch of them that we received this week. And like I said, thank you from the bottom of my heart for such an awesome week of fundraising. We are super excited. Okay, so I think we talked about the stuff going on at the gathering. I talked about the giveaway. Okay, pick a comment for a Charm Pack giveaway, Kaylee. Ooh, okay. I'm going to pick Sarah Bowden. Sarah. Bowden? Spell Sorry. B-E-A-U-D-O-I-N. -B -B -E okay. All right. She's got a charm pack. All right. And hey, Sarah, if you want to text us your, your address, we would love that. Then we don't have to, you know, reach out and contact you. So Primitive Gatherings. Email or Lisa Bonjean, lisa.bonjean at yahoo.com. Send me your address and we'll get that to you. Okay. Um, do you want to do the rest of the prizes now or do you want to do the video? We can do the video. Okay. All one. right. So we're going to stay tuned. Go get a drink. You, we'll be right back. Well, we have, yeah. And so it's just a video explaining. Your, okay. Yes. Yeah. So. Kaylee put together a little video explaining, because we get a lot of questions on, I can't find the block, or I don't know uh, this, or I don't know that. So Kaylee put together a little tutorial on how to find exactly where to get all the stuff from. Yeah, on your blog. Yeah. On my blog. Okay. okay, so. Hey everyone, it's Kaylee, and I'm here to give you a quick guide on finding Lisa's blog. Open up your browser, type in lisabonjean.com, Hey everyone, it's Kaylee, and I'm here to give you a quick guide on finding Lisa's blog. <laughs> Open up your browser, <laughs> type in lisabonjean.com, click on her link, and there her blog will pop up. What you're going to do to find American Quilter Stitch Along is find it in the headings and click on that. 
and it should pop that page right up. And here you're gonna find all of the postings that Lisa has for you for American Quilter Stitch Along. If you scroll down, you'll see blocks posted and YouTube playlist for all the videos on how to do these blocks. To download the PDF, you're gonna click on the block buttons and then you're gonna scroll down on that page and you're gonna find the download block button. And if it doesn't pop up automatically, you may have to go to your downloads folder to find the PDF. I hope this quick guide helps you find American Quilter Stitch Along so you can stitch along with us. There. All right, so pretty easy, right? And one of the other things at the end of this video is we're gonna show you how to subscribe to the blog so you automatically just get an email that gives you the block pattern. So we wanna make sure that everybody subscribes to the blog so it's very easy for you as well. So look for that at the end of our video here. But now it's time to show you block four. So give us a little time to get over to the sewing machine and we'll be right back. Okay, so for this friendship block, what are, this block is made up of four rectangles and four flying geese. So a piece of cake, it's not very hard at all. So you're gonna take a three and a quarter inch light square and you're gonna cut it in half twice diagonally. And that's gonna create your uh, geese part of the flying geese there. And then from the dark fabric, you are going to cut one and seven eighths in half, four of them diagonally for the other part of the flying geese. You have your one and a half by two and a half rectangles and then two of your um, one and an eighth by four and a half and then one and an eighth by five and three quarters. So I did, uh, revamp the older patterns because I didn't have those in the cutting diagrams to begin with, but going forward, those are all in there now. So that's what you need to cut for your block. So then here I started making a few of the blocks here, the, the flying geese. Now for the flying geese, you're going to just line them up directly upon right sides together. And these are going to come out pretty much the exact size that you need. If you don't like to piece exact, you would just make these bigger and then trim them up if that's the method you like. I don't tend to do that. I think I can stitch 
good enough now to make them the right size. So I'm just going to slide them in. Now I just want to com comment on a little question. Somebody on the Stitch with Lisa group had a question about the quarter inch foot on the Jukies. So this is a Juki. It does come with a quarter inch foot. However, sometimes your blocks can be a little small or a little big depending on um, because there is a little bit of variation in here, no matter what. So one of the things you can do is lessen the tension on your presser foot. So this is how hard that slams down. Because sometimes if you have a lot of pressure on there, that'll make that guide bow out a little bit. It'll make it slide over. And then another of the things that I do is when I slide my piece through, I stay on the left side of that seven line. And that seems to work really good. And I just run it along like I don't try to cram it up against that guide. I just kind of run it so it brushes it. And that seems to help me get the best quarter inch possible. They like your sticker, pedal to the metal. Pedal to the metal, they yep. want one. <laughs> That's how I stitch. That was a Moda sti sticker. So maybe someday we can come up with a primitive gatherings version of that. I'm into stickers. I love stickers. So what you would do is you would chain piece these. So you'd run all four through. So those of you who don't know, I have a thread cutter on my machine and a knee lift. So that's why I don't have to move a lot of those, those items. Now I'm just gonna sneak over here and press these to the dark like this. I don't know if Kaylee can follow me or not, but no. <laughs> no? No. Okay. So you know how that looks like. So I'm just going to press those open or back, not open. When you're not on video, how fast do you normally stitch? Oh, pretty, pretty darn fast. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to line up the second triangle on that big triangle. And don't cut off those dog ears right away. Let them. So see how I have this the seam, like that's right where I need to go to. It's like right in that corner. So that's a really a nice indication if my quarter inch is on correctly. So not only do you have to cut accurately, stitch accurately, you have to sew accurately and line things up accurately because you could be off a little bit. So make sure when you turn it over, that everything is lined up right on top of each other. Because I'm sure I'm not the only one that has lined something up not exactly perfect. Does the juki come with a quarter inch foot? It does. And a walking foot and all the feet that you need. This machine is the best value for its money. Thread cut. Now I'm going to press this this way. So Kaylee, you know what they're working on today at the warehouse? No, what are they doing? Our studio. Ooh. Yeah, Ooh. we're the last to get moved, but. <laughs> <laughs> That's OK. Yeah. I'm flexible. I can move. Yeah, me too. I have a really awesome video idea to share with everyone mm, for, it, for the move. So it's going to be like a before what all what the building looks like empty and then the now, like what the building looks like now that it's filled. And it's going to be awesome. All right. So here are my four flying geese units here. Now here, because we have to cut off all the dog ears, here's a good chance to get them as perfect as we can. So they need to be one and a half by two and a half now at this point. So I, this line right here is where I put my one and a half on and I trim that off. So now to trim up the sides, they're two and a half. So at one and a quarter, I'm gonna line up the top and I'm gonna put one and a quarter right in the center of that geese. And look at that, almost perfect. So if you get a little bit of a schmidge, that's okay. So now here I'm going to line up on two and a half. And then I have three whole sides. One, two, three. That should be perfect. And then that last one there. So that's what how to trim all those up. 
So you just have to bear with me. So Kaylee, why don't you pick a winner for the charm pack? Oh, okay. While I'm doing this. All right. Dottie Colligan. Okay. I think I pronounced that right. Dottie, you are a winner. So please email me or message me somehow what your address is so we can get you your charm pack. Did we give away a charm pack first too? Yeah. Okay. So the two charm packs are done. Yep. Now we just have the t-shirt. The t-shirt and we'll do the t-shirt last and we need to do the honey bun. Okay. One, two, three. One and a half there. One and a quarter in the middle of the point. Pretty darn close. How's right. the video quality now? Is it blurry or is it good? Let's see what they say. Let's see what they say. All right, so now it's time to lay out my block. So one that way. And I know some of these stripes are gonna drive you crazy. I know some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, all those stripes going everywhere. It doesn't matter, this is patchwork. We just do it the best we can. Doesn't matter if your stripes don't line up. It's okay. Get over it. Nobody met. It don't matter. All right. So that's what it's going to look like. So really all I have to do is sew a rectangle to the bottom half of the geese on all four of them. So I line that up. Move my mat out of the way. Oh, I knew I was going to unthread this. And I would show you how my thread works, but this one doesn't work. But let me try it just in case. No. I know. It never does. This one doesn't work. All right. Pick another one for the honey bun while I'm doing this. Honey bun. Honey bun, honey bun, honey bun. All right. Carol Forstow. Oh, Carol. She's my buddy. She texts me all the time. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, hey, Carol. Congratulations, Carol. You won a honey bun. Awesome. I know she knows how to get a hold of me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Back in business. All right. Right sides together on the long part of the geese. I admit I have not even had a chance to watch the video from last week, so that was pretty nerve-wracking <laughs> on location doing a video, so I'm hoping it turned out okay. But... Alrighty, so because I don't want this to unthread, I'm just going to throw in a little leader. So now, pick these apart. And I'm going to press this seam open on all of them. If you, if you want to push that to that, I see nothing wrong with that as well. So whatever you like to do, I like to press open most of the time. And I am at the end going to show you the pressing stick one more time and the benefits of that for pressing seams open. Right now I'm just setting this little travel iron right on my seam and it just holds it down there nicely while I pick up the other one. <laughs> Crystal says, fabric honey buns are so much better than the baked kind. Right? No <laughs> calories, all just love. All right, so now it's time to put these together. Oh, here. The name of the place where you get the t-shirts from, I'll, I'll toss that up here. It's Makerville or MakerValleyBrand.com. 
And how nice that it came right in time for the holiday weekend. I think they planned that. <laughs> That's like perfect planning. So now I have two parts to my block. I'm going to press that seam open as well right here. So one of the reasons why I like to press that open is right here where all those seams are coming together, that makes it nice and flat there instead of, instead of to one side or the other. All right, just check in my pattern one more time. All right, now I'm gonna line up these centers. I kind of got the my sewing light off so it doesn't bother the camera, but... Um, so I usually stitch with a little bit more light. So I pin in the middle and then on each end. And I like to pin like back a quarter of an inch, but toward that way. I don't pin this way. So I know a lot of people do. I think that's kind of from clothing. What stitch length do you use? Right now I'm stitching at a smidge under two on my Juki. So when you stitch smaller blocks, you want to lower that a little bit more than you normally would. All right, so here we go. We're going to press this last seam open as well. So I give it a little bit of a finger press. That kind of helps me when I go to the iron. All right, from a distance, it looks good. I know some people that this is going to drive somebody nuts, but doesn't bother me one bit. <laughs> okay, so now it's time to put our four and a halfs on the sides and then the five and three quarters on the top. So aren't these little design boards wonderful? We've always had design boards, but when Lori Holt, put an edge on them and made them cute. That was genius. So if you are sewing, instead of using a scrap here, I would be sewing in other pieces that I would use later on. Or sometimes I'll even build a whole second quilt with leaders and enders. I don't have to pin them if they exactly match. So each one of those exactly matched, right? It was exactly four and a half. So that was perfect. So I'm not gonna press that open. I'm just gonna press these back. And then time for the five and three quarters. Wow, look at that. I'm pretty good with that as well. Anybody have any questions, Kaylee? They want to know how you make the design board. Oh, well, Lori Holt has a tutorial on her blog, I believe. But um, it's just foam core and then a piece of leftover batting. And then um, I know like this one is Lori's. So she like sews something on here. I don't really know why, but I was kind of lazy. So I just glued mine on and mine is just leftover binding. So it worked out really nice. But Lori Holt, that's on her blog on how to do that. 
I don't have one on that. What Juki machine are you currently using? This one is the 2010. So this is the second version. Over here, this is the 98. So I've had that one for over 20 years. And then this is the 2010. And then I'm waiting to bust out the Platinum Edition in the new studio. So in our new studio that we will be uh, hopefully in this month getting ready, we will have the new Platinum one in there. Look at how beautiful that baby turned out. Okay, so now I have previously stitched some of my stripes. So let me move that out of the way without messing it up too bad. I am making, if you see this, I am making three more sets of blocks because I want to give away a quilt. I want to auction off a quilt. I just want to make lots of quilts to give away. So this, you can pin this. I'm going to just trim up the edge here a minute. What did I do with my rotary cutter over right here? All right, I'm just going to give this just a little smidge of a trim because I know I didn't do that. And these stripes are all oversized, so that shouldn't be a problem. And if you want to trim this up or check it, it should be five and three quarters at this point. But when it matches, you know, you know you sew right. So I'm not going to trim it up. Looks good to me. I know some people are like really obsessed with squaring everything up, but. And then you can, if you want, sew with this up so you make sure that none of your open seams flip up. I'm not, do you want to talk about, where did it go? How did you decide on the red and which red and which cream stripes to use? Okay. So let's talk about that when I go to the iron. Okay. Okay. Yep. Great question. Great, great question. But you're probably not going to like my answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this seam can go one way or the other, or it can go open. I'm going to press it open. That little baby iron works, works pretty darn good. All right, so here, this just needs to go on here. And then I'm going to trim it up later. So I'm going to not quite, it's a little bit bigger than mine. Not by much, but a little bit. There, now you can see how fast this machine sews. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at right that seven line. I'm stitching right on the inside of that. So I'm trying not to push against that guy. All right. So I'll clip off my leader here. Press this last seam open. So is that just a habit or why would you recommend pressing it open versus pressing it one way or the other? Um, I just like the bulk to be more evenly distributed. There's no, there's really no rhyme or reason. Like I said, it's just, it just lays nice and flat when you, when you press them. Look at how, look at how nice that looks. All pressed open. Um, it's just easy. Looks good. So really, it don't matter. Eliminating bulk is your priority. Yeah, I like so. to eliminate the bulk. Like I like, because sometimes if you get like when this is long armed, it if it got caught up and there was like five six seams in here, it it would bounce over. Or I just don't I just don't want to get anything for the machine to get caught up on. All right, so here's my twelve and a half. So I'm just gonna park that on one line. So I'm just taking a line and following it along one of the stripes. And then my block edge is perfect. So I'm just going to put that on the edge of the block as nice as possible. 
And I'm going to square up that side and square up this side. There's nothing there until I get right here. And then there was a little bit there on that edge. So you see that I only took a, I could have moved that over a little bit, but no big deal. There was enough there for me to trim off. So now it is 10 and a quarter by 12 and a half. And that is the block. But I just want to go and show you over the iron for a minute about the strips stick and the stripes. So we can slide on over there and we'll catch you there in a second. Okay, so the next comment that comes up, you are going to be the winner of the t-shirt. So Kaylee, who is it? <gasps> Crafting a planned life. Crafting a planned life. You are the winner of our t-shirt. So let me know if you want the large that I have or if you want me to secure you a gift card from Maker Valley and you can just go on their site and order whatever you want. So Congratulations on your win. Okay, so Kaylee kind of scan here. This is this is my stripe making process here. So I have a couple of the top part that are already on, all stitched, everything I need. So these right here, I I sewed two, two, and I sewed them into pairs. So then I sewed the pairs together into three, and then I added one single to the end. So you need to take 20 singles and set them aside so you don't sew them together into your pairs when you're pairing these up. So that's why there's one more to press open here. So all of these here in this stack are waiting for me to press that last seam open. Over here are my long stripes, and I only have these in pairs. Now, how do I decide what goes with with each thing. So I, what I'll do is I'll pick them out. Well, obviously these two can't go together because those are the same stripes. So then I throw that one away. Now this is red, so I'm gonna look for a blue. So here's a blue here. And maybe I don't like that, the red and the blue, the red and the blue. So I'm gonna pick one that has something else on it. So let's go blue, this one. All right, so this one has nothing in common with that one at all. So there's that one and I would sew those together. So then I would go and pick another two that are different. So I'm just putting these together and you only need 20 or however many blocks you already have done, you know, minus those because you don't. So I just pair them up, red, blue, red, blue, looking at the white, that's what I mean. So blue, this one is either red, blue. And then the next one that I would put on this one would be like, so see how I have the two reds and the blue in the middle? So my next one would probably be a blue and then another blue. So two blues and a red. So I'd make several of them like that. But really, I just keep, I don't plan out all of them to make sure, I don't really care. And then once, once I have all these done and these done, I just try to find some that work together that don't have the same in. But if it does, it's okay. It's not the end of the world. So you can be as picky as you want about the placement of your red and cream stripes. But remember, this is to have fun. So don't stress out about it too much. It's all good, it's all good. Now, some of you asked about this strip stick. So what this is, is it helps me press these long seams open. My iron sat for a long time. I just want to make sure it's good. So see how it presses this seam open while not affecting the other seams. So it really isolates the seam that you are working on without messing up the other ones. Because if you would try to do this without the stick, 
you always end up messing up the other ones. You all know what I'm talking about. This is nothing new. So like when I have to press this last one open, I just lay it on there, give it a quick little finger press. And because I start, that really helps that lay flat. So once I use the stick, I turn it over, give it a nice little press back and forth. And everything is flat and beautiful. And sometimes just look it over good and everything should be fine. Okay, so that's all I have for you today for block four. I call it the friendship star. And thank you for being my friend. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you comment. Make sure you hang around with us on Stitch with Lisa on our Facebook group. We really have a lot of fun. And like I said, I'll take any suggestions you have for raising money or for giveaways. I'm more than happy to make this all work. And once we get about halfway, that's when we're really going to amp up our game. So that gives us a, a, a time to finish moving. I was gone two weeks in June, so that kind of really... I didn't get a lot done, let's just be honest. When, I, when I'm gone, I don't get a lot done. But um, we really want to have a lot of fun with the Hogs for Heroes fundraiser. So please join us, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. And Kaylee, we'll, do you have anything for that? Yeah, we'll show, we'll show them the how to subscribe. Okay, so at the end here, this is how to subscribe to my blog, whether you're on a computer or on a tablet or phone. It shows you exactly how to put your email in, and then it'll give you a confirmation email and you say, yes, I want to subscribe to this blog. And then from now on, like when I go and post this block on my blog, it'll just send you the email. You don't have to go and look for it. So it makes it really easy. So have a happy four. Once you're on Lisa's blog page, if you look to the right, you will see links for all of Lisa's platforms, such as her Facebook group, YouTube channel, and if you keep scrolling down, you will find a place to enter your email to subscribe to Lisa's blog. If you enter your email and hit the subscribe button, you will automatically be notified for all of Lisa's new posts. So if you are joining us for the American Quilter Stitch Along, every time Lisa posts another block to be downloaded, it will be directly sent to your email. If you are using your phone rather than a computer, it will look a little bit different. Instead of a column on the right hand side, you're gonna have to just scroll to the very bottom. So keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, and eventually you will find these same links and you will find the field to enter your email for subscribing to her blog.